Hi everyone, Ryan here on the Syntax Byte, and today we're going to take a look at using the ChatGPT API from within Excel by using Power Query. Um, so we're going to create a query in Power Query that will allow you to use ChatGPT. You can ask it uh, a question and you can get a response uh, via the API as opposed to needing to use the website. Um, so this is something that might be useful to you if you have a lot of questions that you want to ask ChatGPT or if you simply want to quickly get the input into uh, Excel, you're going to be able to do that uh, with this Power Query. So the first thing to know is that the ChatGPT API is something that you'll need to sign up for and get an API key. Um, it's different from ChatGPT itself. I think you can use the same account, uh, but you do need to uh, create an API key for this. I'm not going to go over that process uh, because I think it's fairly simple and explained on the website and subject to change over time as well. Um, but definitely go ahead and make sure that you got an API key um, and then uh, rejoin up with the video here. So uh, there's a number of things that you can do with the OpenAI API, um, which is sort of a broader API that allows you to interact not only with ChatGPT, but a couple other models like Whisper. Um, and Dolly, which is the image generation model. Um, we're gonna be focusing on ChatGPT today. Uh, it's probably the model that makes the most sense to interact with from Excel, uh, given that it is like a text-based model. Um, so that's what we're gonna focus on today. Um, and there's really just one main API endpoint, um, the chat completion object. Um, there is an older version of the API as well. Um, with called completions and you'll see that it's flagged as a legacy API. Uh, so we're gonna focus on the newer uh, chat completion uh, API today and uh, get some responses from ChatGPT uh, from within Excel. So the first thing to notice is that the, the main endpoint here, um, completions, is actually a post uh, request. So if you're not that familiar with REST APIs, there's different types of requests. A lot of APIs use GET requests, which means that you can actually put the, the parameters that you're gonna to send to the API right in the URL. Um, this is a post request. So it's actually a different type of request and that does make things a little bit trickier with Power Query, but it's nothing that we can't handle. Um, so it's just something that we're gonna to have to account for um, is that it is this po post request. What we need to do is we need to send a post request to this URL here. Um, we need to give it a content type we're going to give a header with our API key, and then we're going to give it a, a JSON object, which is going to describe the current state of the conversation with ChatGPT. In most cases, this might be a single uh, system message where you can tell ChatGPT kind of what it is. Yeah, so you can see here in this one, it says you are a helpful assistant. You can actually just go ahead and skip the uh, system message if you don't uh, have any particular requirements in that area, and you just want to ask it a general question. And then you're usually gonna have one message from the user. This one says, hello, um, ChatGPT will respond to that. Um, you may also have other messages from, uh, you know, the prior conversation. So you could have like a chain of messages that would provide context to ChatGPT. Um, so that's another way, way that you could uh, call the API. In our case, we're just gonna, gonna start everything as, you know, sort of the first message and have like a single inquiry and a single response. Uh, but you can play around with this. You can also request that the API gives you back multiple responses. So by default, it will only give you one response. That's definitely the easiest for parsing uh, within Power Query, but you can request um, that the API give you multiple responses back from ChatGPT, which is something pretty cool um, that the API allows you to do. So to get started here, we're gonna go into Excel, we're gonna go to data, and we're gonna to go to get data and I'm actually just gonna go from other sources and blank query. And the reason is that there's actually no GUI that will allow us to do a post request. So we actually have to code this in the advanced editor. So we're gonna go right in here and we're gonna open up the advanced editor. Um, and that's how we're gonna, that's how we're gonna be able to pull in our source. So for the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna set our, our URL in as a variable, so our base URL. And I'm just gonna copy the chat completions URL here. And I'm gonna put that in there. The next thing I want is the body of our request. So um, this is going to be that JSON that we have. And this is what we're gonna modify when the user actually, uh, you know, sort of calls this query 
um, to input you know their their request um, so for the body I'm just going to start with something static all right so we can just go ahead and copy uh, this example here one thing you'll notice is it talks about no streaming and streaming we want no streaming streaming is sort of that feature that if you've used chat GPT it will sort of look like it's writing the text um, and so it will stream parts of it parts of its response and then continually stream it um, that's something that might be quite complex to implement we we don't want to do that we just want a simple no streaming so we'll let it finish generating the response and then send it over as one big batch to us uh, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this I'm gonna open up a notepad um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and paste it and what we want is actually this JSON file here um, but the reason I'm doing this this here is that in order for us to put this into Power Query, we need to actually double all of these quotes. Um, and so in order to do that, the easiest way that I've found is just to pull it into Notepad, go replace, find what, put a quote, go replace with two quotes, and go replace all. And then uh, we should basically be able to put that directly into our query editor. So we'll say our body is that there. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Oops. I'm just gonna tab in uh, this one there. Perfect. So there we've got our body. Uh, it's complaining that something was expected. Okay, and of course after I realized that uh, after I did that, I realized that the problem is actually that we didn't put a comma here, and then we also need a comma at the end of this line. But it is kind of because it's fairly short, pretty clean to have it in one line anyway. So uh, that's okay. Um, so we've got our body here. We're going to use the, the model GPT 3.5 Turbo. So you can select uh, what version of GPT you want using this. Um, and then we have a system message telling the chat GPT that it, it's, an, it's a helpful assistant. And then the user just says hello. So um, we'll see what chat GPT has to say about that. Okay. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is actually uh, send off this web request. So we can do response, and where this is going to store our response, we're going to do web.contents. Um, we're going to send it to the URL, and then we're going to put our headers in. So we're going to do content equals uh, text.toBinary. Uh, for some reason, we need to pass our body in binary format. And then we're going to do our headers. So our headers are going to have content type. And that's the type of the content that we're sending and getting back. Uh, application slash JSON, as well as our authorization. So we can authenticate with the chat GPT API. Uh, we're going to say bearer, and then we're going to put our... Um, our API key here and so of course I will deactivate this API key after the video so you guys can't spend on my chat GPT API um, but you'll just need to put your own API key in here and then of course we need to put a comma at the end of the line okay so the next thing that we want to do um, is just say that source equals json.document response and that should um, give us the response as a json document so we can go ahead now and of course this is going to be static but we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll deal with making this dynamic in just a second uh, but we're going to go source json document and click done and that worked so that's good you'll see that we got uh, something back here um, and that we have uh, the created timestamp and ID and then we have something called choices and so the number of choices will depend on if you sent that parameter n um, so by default it's one so you could also add that into your um, request if you wanted to get more than one but we can rely that it's going to be one by default um, and then we can click into that we can see the message we see the role which should be assistant it says hi there how can I assist you today and so this is basically the core response of ChatGPT. So we want to go ahead and actually just um, basically do a drill down. Okay. Um, so that's it. That's that. That's our query. That's that's what we want to get. We want to get that response. Um, 
but we don't just want to necessarily get that response one time for this one message. Um, that's not that useful. Um, so something that we want to be able to do is turn this into a function um, that we can ask ChatGPT many uh, queries and that we can use this function um, in our queries um, and within Excel. So to do that, we're going to go back to advanced editor. You'll see that it actually, as we were clicking through, transformed our query a little bit. So we got to use a mixture of code uh, to, as well as the GUI to create this query. But the next thing to do is just simply to uh, turn it into a function. So we can go to the top in parentheses. We're going to put inquiry as text. And then where we have our message and we have our user content, we can go ahead and just do and uh, message and and then open up that again. Now, I think we actually do need to have the quotes here. So I'm going to double quote on either side of that um, so that the message will actually be in quotes when we send it. Um, and sorry, this should actually say inquiry, my bad. And so when we click done, this has now transformed our query into a function. And to test it, we can just type in the box here what our query is. So we can say, um, you know, what are some competitors to Microsoft Excel? Invoke. It might work. There we go. So it took a little second there. Of course, we're not using the streaming, so it has to generate and send the whole response. Um, but you know, so we get an example, some competitors to Microsoft Excel include Google Sheets, Apple Numbers, Zoho Sheet, uh, LibreOffice Calc, etc. So this is quite a long response, um, but we did go ahead and get our response from ChatGPT there. So now we can go ahead and delete this query. We can delete that. I'm going to, uh, we can call this query uh, GPT response or something. Um, and then we can go ahead and I'm going to do a close and load. Oh, it won't actually let me do a close and load too. I hope it doesn't actually try to make a table out of this. But I'm going to go to close and load. Okay, connection only. Perfect. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of question and responses. Um, so we can have a question. We can say, you know, um, who is the tallest person who ever lived? Um, what is the area of Canada? Um, what is the capital of the United States? How many states in the European Union? So I've got a list of questions here and I'm looking to fill in the response. Actually, I'm going to just actually delete the response and leave the questions. And then we're going to go to get and transform data and do from table range. Uh, we're going to say my table does have headers and click OK. Awesome. So at this point, I want to add a column. So I'm going to go add column and we're going to say invoke custom function. Our function query is GPT response. Our new column name is, yeah, we can call it GPT response. And then we're going to set the variable inquiry to question. Click OK. It's going to require some information about data privacy. I usually just turn this off. Click Save. All right, and we have our answers. So we can see the tallest person was Robert Wadlow. I believe I've heard of him. Uh, Canada is 9.98 million square kilometers, making it the second largest country by land area. Capital of the United States is Washington, D.C., and there's currently 27 member states in the European Union. So this is a uh, pretty simple way to quickly get responses to questions we might have and pull them into Excel. There's, of course, lots of things you could do with ChatGPT. I think once you have the basics of making that post request and sort of building that request, um, and then you know you can you might have to do some additional parsing on the other side. In this case, we've just pulled out the text, um, but depending on what you were hoping to get back, maybe there might be some some more that you wanted to do with your query. Uh, but I think this is a really really good jumping off point for anyone who wants to use uh, Chat GPT 
uh, within Excel uh, and specifically within Power Query. So that's, uh, we're gonna go ahead and end the tutorial there. Once again, it's been Ryan on the Syntax Byte. Like the video if it helped you out. Go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this and I will see you in the next one.